we all find it little difficult to draw ray diagrams for spherical mirrors. Today, I am going to show you the easiest way to draw a ray diagram for concave mirrors. Let's start drawing the ray diagram for various positions of an object placed in front of the concave mirror. So, let's first place an object far away, far behind or beyond the center of curvature of this mirror. To figure out where its image is going to be, all we have to do is pick a point on this object. Let's pick the topmost point on this object. Note that this point is giving out rays of light in all the direction. But we'll pick a few which will go hit the mirror and see what happens to them. If we take a random ray or a bunch of rays, it becomes difficult to trace what happens to them after reflection. But if we pick few particular rays as you'll see, it becomes easier to trace them. So two of those rays we are going to draw over here. Let's draw a ray that goes parallel to the principal axis. The reason we picked this is because we already know that all parallel rays which hits this mirror goes through the focus after reflection. So this ray has to go through the focus after reflection. So here it goes. Now another ray we can draw through the focus or maybe we can also draw it through the center of curvature. They will also do. But as I'm going to tell you the easiest way to draw a ray diagram, I will suggest you to take another light ray as the one which is targeted at the pole. So let's draw a ray that is shot all the way from here and goes to the pole. For this ray, you see the principal axis forms the normal at the pole because the principal axis passes to the center of curvature and we can easily see the angle of incidence here. So after reflection, the ray of light will just go somewhat like this, keeping the angle of reflection the same. So it goes somewhat this way. Thus, the two incident rays after reflection intersect at this point. In fact, if we were to draw more incident rays, then it would look a lot like this. Here, you will notice that all those rays are focused at this particular point. If we put a screen right at this point, we will see a sharp image over here. But at any other place, the rays won't meet and the image will be blur. So to figure out where the images form, we need to figure out where all the rays are going to intersect. So it's enough if we just draw two rays of light and that's the image of this point is going to be at this point over here. So we'll find an image over here. And similarly, if you take another point on the object and draw the rays like this, you would see they will get focused somewhere over here. Bottommost point on the principal axis would get focused right at this point over here. And as a result, we get this image. The image would look somewhat like this. The image between F and C, it is inverted and real because we can capture on the screen. Any image that can be captured on the screen is called real. As you can see, this image is diminished in nature. All right. Now, using the same technique, let's see what happens if we bring our object closer. Let's say object is somewhat over here. First of all, notice the parallel ray gonna look exactly the same. The ray that is being focused right at the pole, this ray now starts making a bigger angle at the pole. Can you see that? Because now it originates from here. So the angle of incidence at the pole has increased. And as a result, the angle of reflection will also increase. So the reflected ray will go somewhat like this, right? And as a result, the rays are now intersecting at this point. That means to obtain a sharp image, we have to move my screen away from the mirror. And we can say that the image is also moving away from the mirror. Notice the image is now getting bigger. So as we move the object closer to the mirror, Notice we have to move the screen away from the mirror. Also, you can see that an image is getting bigger and bigger. Now, let's say we bring the object right at the center of the curvature. Now, the image will be formed right at C. 
the image height will be exactly the same as the object's height. Let's now bring the object even closer. Let's say we keep it between F and C, somewhere over here. Well, now if you draw the ray diagram, we'll find that all the rays of light are going to intersect somewhere over here, beyond C. So, image will be beyond C and it will be huge in size. Closer you bring this, farther the image will be and the bigger it will be. Eventually, we can bring our object right at the principal focus and now you will see that the two rays become exactly parallel to each other and as a result, they will never meet each other, which means you will never see an image. Even at infinity, no image is formed. But what if we go even further and bring the object between P and F somewhere over here? Well. Now the rays of light after reflection are being divergent. They are going away from each other, which means again, there will be no real image. That is, you cannot capture this image on a screen. However, if you keep a giant eye somewhere over here, you see that these two rays of light are emanating from somewhere back over here. As a result, we will see a virtual image at this point and you can still see it. It is erect in nature. It is magnified. Now we bring the object very close to the mirror. Inside the principal focus and as a result, we can see a giant, erect and virtual image. So, concave mirrors can produce magnified virtual images and this is why they are used as shaving mirrors, makeup mirrors, etc. As the object gets closer, you will find that the image stays virtual. If it comes even closer, image will be less magnified. So, for the concave mirrors, as long as the object is beyond the principal focus, the image will be real. And if the object is before the principal focus, its image is virtual. That's all of it. In the next session, we will talk about ray diagrams for various position of an object in front of the convex mirror. Till then, try drawing the ray diagrams for it. Thank you.